Ladies and gentlemen in the Shrew Gaming Citicom video, we're going to be taking a look at Sapphire's Nitro, which of course would be the model of the R9 390. So I have to say that this is a rather nice looking card, and you can see that I'm taking a look at the box right now and uh, showing you all of the uh, internals, what you actually get with the GPU and get, giving a little spin. We have done the full article, if you want more pictures and a full breakdown of all this stuff, it's linked in the video description. You don't get a huge amount of content within the box. You get one HDMI cable, which you'll see on screen, and the GPU, a set of drivers, um, and the usual manuals and warranty stuff. You don't get um, any converters or any of that jazz, so just be aware of that if you don't have the requisite uh, two 8-pin power connectors. So, what about the GPU's performance? Well, the GPU is pretty much marketed for those who are looking for a 4K gaming solution. Honestly speaking, it does pretty well. We've got a comparison how it actually compares to the 290X and uh, other GPUs on the site. But effectively speaking, it's got 2560 stream processors compared to 2816 of the 290X and the 390X. 160 TMUs versus 176 of the 290X or the 390X and 64 ROPs. So the, what are the big changes for the 390? Because I know a lot of people have been like, it's a rebrand, is it a rebrand, is it not a rebrand? Well, there are some differences uh, between the 290 and the 390. Significantly, the one that many are going to cite, of course, is the fact it's got double the frame buffer. It's 8 gigabytes versus 4. But that's certainly not the only change. There are some others. The bus width has been um, remain does remain the same at 512 bit, but traditionally the clock speed of the GPU, sorry, that's my phone, has been a little slower when it comes to the memory core clock. It's been five gigahertz effective versus six. So this has actually been addressed. Um, the 390 does feature considerably more memory bandwidth than the its predecessor, and the core clock has also been increased. The 290 was at 947, and this is 1010, so 1010 megahertz, which is a smidgen of a difference. It's not, you know, going to break the world record or anything like that, and you could certainly overclock the 290, but it is a bonus. Speaking of overclocking, we have done some testing, which is not covered in this video, but it is a little in the article. Um, we're really pushed for time today, but in our initial testing the gpu overclocked about 10 percent which made quite a bit of difference anyway getting back to the actual major changes to this supposedly amd and there is a little bit of confusion on this and no one's speaking a hundred percent but supposedly because they've refined the manufacturing process of uh, hawaii somewhat then what they've gone ahead and done is slightly lower the voltage requirements for the actual gpu um, and additionally, um, I'm hearing some rumors they've tightened memory timings as well, which obviously will have a positive impact in the overall performance of the card. So what about the GPU? Well, we're using the currently latest drivers, which are 15.15.1004. Um, obviously, the 290X are at our 290X review was several months ago, so it was conducted with earlier drivers, therefore performance has been a little off, um, but the 390 performs extremely well. Uh, Fire Strike, for example, hits 12,146 12, for the GPU-only testing, which is very impressive. Uh, Tomb Raider, uh, base 83 frames per second. Bioshock Infinite, 97 frames per second. Very impressive stuff. This GPU on 1080p is going to massacre pretty much any game unless it's either ridiculously intensive or badly coded. This GPU will massacre it. 1080p, no problem. That's not really a surprise, however, given the price range of, car of course, of the card. When you're starting to pay around the 300 mark, you know, 250 to 300 mark, then you're going to expect 1080p to not really pose any problem at all. Fire Strike Extreme at uh, 1440p and all the other 1440p benchmarks, very much the same deal. This card is really targeted for those with a 1440p monitor or those who are playing 1080p who maybe wish to do some downsampling at the very minimum. Um, 
once again 5404 uh, uh, 3d mark extreme very impressive for your information we got a little bit of a boost with overclocking we hit a uh, 3d mark extreme at 52 uh, sorry 5826 which is roughly a 400 point increase over the default clock speeds once again titles like thief sleeping dogs bioshock infinite all ran ludicrously well tomb raider did tank a little bit but that's because of tress effects and as everyone knows tress effects is rather intensive so i don't really need to tell you that stuff because that's pretty obvious information you can see that obviously on screen the conclusion however is is the gpu worthy of purchase well my personal opinion is it depends what you're coming from if you're already the owner of let's say a 290 or a 290x or something around that ballpark the nvidia equivalent probably not you know it's it would be a slight increase a slight upgrade but it's it's kind of a side grade then again it depends how much you can sell your old card for i guess on the other hand if you're coming from something a little older let's assume that you've got something along the lines of a gtx 670 maybe something along those lines or maybe a 7950 just for the sake of argument then yeah the 390 is a real nice card and then there isn't really that much of a price difference between it and the free uh, and um the 290 either furthermore if you look at some pricing right now there's some really weird things going on in the gpu market uh, and the 390x at least currently as of the time i'm recording uh, with the websites i've checked in the uk there is around 100 pounds i'm rounding up slightly but around 80 to 100 pounds depending on the make model and so forth of the gpu compared to the 290 uh, compared to the 390x i would submit that it's actually with this price range better to go for the 390 i think the 390 represents better value overall i'm not saying the 390x is a bad card i just think the 390 is the sweet spot where the 390x is getting all kind of towards the, t the territory where you almost want to consider getting for example the 780 uh, sorry the 980 tie or maybe the fiji that type of thing but at least that's how my mindset works Furthermore, because this card does have 8GB of RAM plus all the other bits and bobs, you could theoretically crossfire this card with an absolutely ludicrous amount of performance. Um, you know, roughly 10 T flops plus a large frame buffer, not a problem. And of course, there are some other benefits to this card. For example, AMD have put in a basically a frame rate limiter if you just so desire to enable it. This will cause the card to run at a specific speed um, and basically throttle itself. Let's assume for the sake of argument you target 60 FPS. The card will stick with that rather than trying to render at a higher speed. This will save both power and of course produce less heat. So yeah, uh, the GPU gets a nice thumbs up from me. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.